So we already talked about container images. I said, I mentioned already, it's a read only file system with instructions for starting a container. So the point is, if, if you, for example, take a container base image, which is, you know, a collection of operating system tools. Um, so for example, there's an Ubuntu image and there's a, maybe a CentOS image. They are not starting, you know, a separate kernel there, I think, but they are basically loading the tools and the directory structures you're familiar with. So uh, it will give you the impression of, of having a, a Ubuntu. But the point is that you'll, you can form a hierarchy of container images by referring or making your container image based on an existing um, container image. So you can have a, basically a, a, a linked list of container images. So for example, your application could use a node container image and that could be uh, using Alpine Linux or uh, Ubuntu Linux. So sometimes you'll find container images in different flavors. Um, for example, one that's based on a more heavyweight container image and one that's based on a lightweight container image. Um, so why is that the case? Well. If you want to interact with your uh, container, you can open a shell to a container sometimes and most of the times you want to have some tools there to, to, to use. And if, if all you want to start a, a process and you have a lot of little containers, you want to keep them as small as possible. So there are, there's a trend towards very lightweight containers um, and we will use a few of them in the future. All right, so, so far we got you need a container image. You need to build that container image somehow. Once you got a container image, that container image contains whatever needs to be started, uh, whatever needs to start your, your database, for example, could, could include the Postgres binary. And it also contains the way you start it up. So that means the container has to know whether to mount a persistent volume it also has to know where to mount the persistent volume and the the database has to know where to put the data so that the volume and the data comes to you know together so all those little parameters they will be input to the container start and part of that will be contained in the container image for example the default start command it's usually in the container image I'm not really sure where, whether it's in the container image in the, in the, in the container format, but I think, I, I think it is. So there are some open questions to me. You will see throughout the lecture. So please forgive me that container images can be based on other container images. That is the linked list read only file system, which brings us to the last component. That is, um, the foundation for, 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 you know, containerization is if you have one, one um, container host where you start all your containers, um, it's quite, you know, easy to have your container images locally. But this, this is not how you handle that practically. Most of the time you will pull a container image and you will heavily reuse container images from the community. So there are several uh, container, so-called container registries, which is basically a a plop store for binary large objects, um, like an object store with a little meta information management around it. Um, so that you'll have a username and that username has several images and that you can refer to that image by uh, providing username and the image name and maybe a tag to refer to a particular version so that you can pull such an image to your uh, local node, local container uh, host and start a container from it. So um, you'll create a container image from your application in order to start a container. And you need to store that container image at a container registry, which is a simple web service for, for uploading and downloading container images. 